All right, Tyler, so we got a bad situation here. We have actually mm -hmm. an attacker who wants to exfiltrate uh, data uh, using a protocol and some port numbers. So talk to us about a theme we see in answer choices, which is FTP. What is that about? Mm. So you know how newspapers sometimes have a correction section? Well, on Quitna, we have that too. So last week, we had a great discussion about FTP and what happens at port 20. And while that discussion is extremely relevant because the content is important and testable, in the question, the context was a little off. So we had mentioned that FTP can be used as a form of data exfiltration. But really, in the modern day, as one of our viewers pointed out, attackers typically don't use that method anymore because organizations have figured out how to actually stop it. So the question is, how, in the modern day, would an attacker actually attempt data exfiltration? Well, I'm glad you asked, and enter DNS tunneling. So before we can talk about DNS tunneling, we have to first, duh, define DNS. So DNS stands for, this is a protocol that you and the rest of the internet users use all the time. So DNS basically translates domain names or URLs to IP addresses. So for example, if you're at work and you're bored and it's time to head to ESPN.com, you go to your browser and you type in ESPN.com. You don't have to remember or memorize the IP address of ESPN.com. The DNS protocol will actually translate your web address that you typed in to the IP address your computer can get there. Now, when your computer doesn't know the IP address of the website you're trying to go to, it's going to ask what we call a DNS server. When it asks the DNS server to respond with an IP address, that ask is called a query. So now that we know what a query in DNS is, now we can talk about how that protocol can be abused in data exfiltration. All right, so now we can talk about DNS tunneling. What we have here is we have sensitive inf information or data on a client that we want to see if we can exfiltrate and somehow have it land in a place it's not supposed to be like the internet. So what we could try, you know, typical and traditional internet connectivity methods, but the problem is in a corporate environment, we typically have a firewall that is inspecting and blocking this type of traffic. So we're going to abuse the DNS protocol to create a covert channel and actually exfiltrate that sensitive data out. So how this works from the attacker's perspective is I really need two things. I need a domain website. And I also need a local DNS server. So what happens is I'm gonna actually have the client go ahead and try to query this DNS server. So what happens is when the client goes and tries to go to this website, it'll typically be passed through a local DNS server. Now this DNS server probably doesn't have the IP address of the attacker's website, so it's gonna, what? What's that word? Exactly, query this website and actually ask and expect a returned IP address. The thing is, a query is simply just packets that we can actually configure and manipulate. So what we do is we actually put the sensitive data into the query. So the sensitive data, which is hidden or part of the query, actually gets sent and now it is in a place where the attacker can actually inspect it and now owns it. DNS tunneling is such a prominent and effective data exfiltration method, really for two reasons. One, because think about it, all oh, there's so much legitimate querying DNS traffic that's actually leaving your network, right? So all of your firewalls, DLPs, proxies, IDSs, they typically don't focus or don't monitor DNS traffic. The other thing that you could do with a query, you can send so many that you can actually chop up your sensitive data so it's less likely to be caught on its way out. So once the sensitive data reaches somewhere where the attacker can actually control, they can actually decrypt it and reconstruct it and put it back together and actually piece together that sensitive information. All right, well, big thank you to the viewer who actually gave us the opportunity to talk about DNS tunneling. Of course, our goal at CyberVista is just to make sure you guys are educated and up to date. Now, if this was really interesting to you, I recommend that you check out the CEH or Certified Ethical Hacker exam. It's full of really, really cool stuff like this and clever ways that attackers can actually bypass network security. So, hope you enjoyed this, hope you found it helpful, and we'll see you next week.